We have just had the launch of the new Apple Silicon Max. However, can the new M1 MacBook run Windows 10? Is it possible to even do this? Well, we're going to find out right after this. So if you want to hear the latest gaming news, tech news, reviews and comparisons, hit that subscribe button followed by the bell. So we have just had the launch of the new Mac Mini, the new MacBook Pro and also the new MacBook Air what I have right here. Now many of us will be buying this because of that new M1 processor what is absolutely outstanding. In fact check out my review of the M1 processor on my channel to have a bit more details about it. However that one of the big questions that everyone's wondering is will Windows 10 run on this? So for many years now since we've had Intel processors in Macs up until now in the last say 15-16 years or so we've had the ability to run Windows either on a virtual machine using virtual machine clients or we've had the ability to actually boot up from the start on the computer using Apple's own program called Bootcamp and basically that allows you to completely boot up into Windows absolutely fine and Apple provide the drivers for all the chipsets and all of the things like the webcam, keyboard, you name it and mouse and trackpad and you are able to have a full Windows experience on your MacBook and then when you were finished you could just shut it down and then you could boot back into your Mac here and then you could get going there. And then like I said there were other people out there or other companies who created virtual machines and especially in the more later years now where we get more cores on processors where we're getting like six or even eight cores on them it's been much more easier to use virtual machines instead of just having two cores or four cores before and sharing them amongst your Mac OS and also your Windows virtual machines. It's become more and more appealing. However, with the new M1 chip, we're now running on ARM architecture, not x86, what Intel runs on or AMD runs on, for example. So it's a completely different way how this machine is built. It is more built like an iPhone, for example, the architect of that A chip, for example, the A12, what's in the, or the A14 more like, in the new um, iPhone 12. They are, those kind of chipsets are now inside this MacBook and the MacBook Pro and also the Mac Mini, what have just come out. So basically, can this machine be able to do that? Now there are some options that Apple have given us. They've given us a new option of Rosetta 2 for example and this basically allows x86 chips, so this was the Intel chips, software to be converted into M1 logic as it were, to run on M1 chips. So we're going to download a couple of virtual machine clients onto this MacBook Air and we're also going to download a Windows 10 image and we're going to see if we can boot Windows 10 on the most popular virtual machines clients out there and also at the same time as well we're going to test that if Bootcamp will run on this machine as well or even if Bootcamp is even there on this machine. So let's go and have a look. So then guys, this is my MacBook Air, like I said, and then I'm just going to go to about this Mac just to show you guys it is the M1 MacBook Air that we have got here. You can see there's an Apple M1 chip inside, 8 gigs of RAM, and then at the same time as well, we do have 256 gigabytes storage. Now, the first thing I want to try out is Boot Camp. Now, if you don't know what Boot Camp is, Boot Camp is the ability to run Windows on a Mac, basically, as a separate boot up. So you wouldn't even boot into the Mac OS to get to that. You would actually boot up from the very beginning when you first turn your Mac and you hold down the option button. And basically, you've got the choice of picking either going into Mac OS or into Windows once it's been installed. So we're going to check if that actually is here. So if I type in Boot Camp, well, there we go, I've already started putting it in. And straight away it says boot camper system cannot be used so if we click on to the learn more let's find out a bit more information and as you can see here straight away it says you can install it and it tells you the max that it can install and cannot install on and funny enough actually i think um, apple need to update the site because it says here like here look macbook air what i've got right away introduced in 2012 or later and that's what this macbook air is here it doesn't actually say that if you've got a m1 macbook air it doesn't work 
Yeah, it's actually giving me all the guides and everything how to do it. Mm. So Apple do need to update themselves on that. So we'll, we'll just get rid of that for the moment and minimize that down for now. So straight away, it doesn't work. So we can't use the bootcamp method at all to install uh, macOS onto this machine. Now, what we are going to do though, is we are going to download some virtual machines clients as it were to run. But to do that, we do need to download the Windows test image, then 10 disk image and even. So you've got to set Windows 10 here, and then we can confirm that. And then we can also choose which language we're in. So I'm English. There we go, confirm that. And then we've got the choice of 32 and 64 bit uh, versions. Now it take ages to download this, so I've already downloaded it, but you know, this is where you'd get um, Windows 10 from if you've got a license and everything and you want to get started as well, or even have a 30 day trial with Windows 10. You can download it straight from Microsoft's website. Now the actual first actual virtual machine client we're gonna test out is Fusion. So VM Fusion has been around for a long, long time. And it's been, quite frankly, it's one of the best that is around um, right now. And it's been out for many, many, many years, ever since um, Intel um, chips started coming inside MacBooks. So again, what I've already done, I've already downloaded a version here, but you can follow that guide. And I've already got it down at the bottom. So I'm just gonna minimize that. And we're just going to open that up right now. So we've got VM Fusion. And then we're gonna actually create a new machine here. So I'm gonna actually say, we're gonna install it from a disk or image. We're gonna click continue. And we say we can drag the image here. And we'll say we use another one, cause I know where it is. It's in my downloads. There it is, Windows 10. Oh, I'd like to use access to my download folder. That's okay. Windows 10, 32 bit version. Now I'm gonna click continue. Now you, some of you might be asking, why am I not using the 64 bit version? Main reason is because I'm just doing a tester here. 64-bit version allows you to use more RAM and allows it to be a bit more snappier, but this is just, just testing it out at the end of the day. So if I can only allocate three gigabytes of RAM to this machine, so be it, I'm happy with that. So we're gonna click continue. And then it's got all my bits and pieces. It's saying if I want to put my thing, I've got my language. It says which version of Windows I've got. I haven't selected it yet, so I'm gonna say Windows 10 Home. And I'm gonna click continue. Uh, I don't have a key. So continue without the key for the moment. Um, I'm gonna make it more isolated for this view. And let's just click continue. That means we're not gonna mix the apps up between Mac OS and Windows. Click continue and there's a summary. We've got 60 gigabytes allocated. We've got two cores allocated. At the same time, we've got one gigabyte of RAM. Well, I might wanna change actually in a minute, but we'll see how it boots up to begin with. And we're gonna call it Windows 10 32. Let's call it that. So we're gonna click save. And there we go. And straight away, fail to power on. This basically means again, it's because of that M1 chipset inside it, that ARM 64-bit chipset, what Apple have made, it's not compatible at this stage. So that's one out of the water. So let's go back to the drawing board. So Fusion, you don't work. Next of all is VirtualBox. And again, you can download it by clicking here. And as you can see right down here, guys, I've already downloaded it. So. VirtualBox has been around for a good amount of time now. It's created by the guys who make Oracle and it's free. This one's totally free. The other two, the last one I've just shown you and the one I'm gonna show you after this, you actually have to pay for, but VirtualBox is totally free to use for personal use. So I'm just gonna minimize that down. And we're gonna open up VirtualBox. So I'm going to again, again make a brand new machine. I'm gonna click new and I'm gonna call it again, Windows. Oh, when I went, turn 32. I'm gonna click continue. Uh, we're gonna have a gig of RAM, that'll be fine for this. Uh, we're gonna create a new virtual hard disk, that's absolutely fine. Yeah, use it as a virtual box, that's absolutely fine as well. Now we're gonna click next. Dynamically allocated and everything like that. We've also got everything sorted there. Storage, yeah, where it's gonna be stored, I'm happy with that. So what we want to do when we change some settings and what we want to do is in the storage here where there's a disk, we want to basically pop in a disk, an image. And there we go, look, the 32 bits, it's ready recognized. So I'm going to select that. And there we go, I'm just going to check that saved it. It has indeed, yep, 32. Click that 
And now what we're going to do, we're going to power that on as well. No, it doesn't work. Fail to load. And it's given me a whole load of result codes and bits and pieces. It doesn't work at all either on Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager. So I'm afraid to say, guys, that is VirtualBox done. And that doesn't work either. Next of all, then, is Parallels. Now, Parallels has been around some time. And if anything, they argue this is the main um, rival against uh, VMware Fusion, as it were. And they've been in a lot of competition for years now. So again, I've downloaded the free trial and we've got it down here ready to go. So we're just going to minimize that down. So I'm just going to open up Parallels now. Oh, and straight away, look at that. This version of Parallels desktop is not supporting Apple Silicon. Oh dear, that's not good, is it? And click, click OK. Oh, it still allows me to go into it, though. So, oh. Everything does seem to work in that sense. It's probably just not going to boot up. We can give it a try though. It's taking its time to load. It's going to install Windows. So it's saying that we need to have it. If you want to use another operating system, I'm going to install Windows. It's going to create a Windows 10 image. And it's going to download it. I'm not actually going to cancel this because I've already got it. So I don't actually want Windows 10 again. So I'm going to click skip, actually. I'm going to get, uh, I've got that. So I'm going to install Windows or another OS from a disk. That's a better idea, isn't it? So there we go. It's found it. There we go. You don't need to download it at all. So we're going to click continue. I don't have a license key at the moment. Uh, what version of Windows 10 have we got? Let's say we've got home and click 10. And I'm going to use it for productivity for this case, just to see if it actually works. Yeah, we're going to do that. It's going to create ourselves an image. Says it's still not supported. <laughs> Again, really throwing it. I don't think it's going to work, guys. I'm going to leave it that as the name. No. <laughs> I'll click create again. No. It really does not want to continue. It knows. Yeah, I think we're just going to skip this. So we're going to click learn more. And it's just going to open up on figure. And this is something I actually had open already. Um, here, as you can see on this page here, we've already got that open. Let's just close it down there. So it says here, this is from Nick Dabrowski's. I think I've said that right, or Dabrowski. So forgive me if I've said that wrong. And he's the vice president of engineering support, or senior one. And he says that they're looking to create it. They're looking it to work with it, um, but at the moment it's just not there yet. Well, the good news is, guys, right now. The answer is we cannot run Windows 10 on um, a Mac with M1 chip inside it right now. What is a bit disappointing. So if you're buying it for using it for Mac and also you're buying it to use um, to have Windows right now at the moment, end of November 2020, it does not work. However, I'm going to put a however. What has happened is the guys at Parallels have said that they're doing basically a preview, a private technical preview, and you can sign up to this to be an early person to get it and test it out if you really, really want to. Now, good news, I've already down, well, not downloaded this, I've already signed up to this, so I should be getting a copy when it comes available. But what you guys need to do if you really want to try out Windows is that you can s sign up to this as well. And I'd really, really recommend that. So it does look hopeful. And I will also be leaving a link in the description to this web page for you guys to sign up as well. It's totally free. There's no affiliate links or anything like that. So you can sign up. Well, there you have it, guys. At the moment, the M1 chip is not compatible with Windows 10. You never know in the future we might be able to. And to be honest, it does look quite hopeful. Right now, I'm not too sure about Bootcamp, for example, what Apple make for their machines. It is possible they might do it. So right now, for example, Windows do have an ARM64 um, image right now, what they use on their Surface uh, Go, I think they use it right now. And I think Samsung borrow it for one of their machines as well. It's just not freely 
available right now. And I think it's still in its kind of preview state, but you never know. Apple do have a good relationship with Microsoft and they've said this many times for many years, even though you'd think they're the outright competitors for each other, they do have a good working relationship. So you never know, we might have the ability to actually have that image and boot camp to be updated to run Windows 10 on an ARM-based chip from startup. On the other side of the coin though is the virtual machine world. Well, we do have really, really good news there as we saw with Parallels. Parallels, for example, have got that private beta. And like I said, I'm gonna be putting that in the description below this video. So make sure you sign up to that to get yourself involved in that technical private beta, as it were, if you do want to test uh, Windows 10 on a virtual machine. There definitely is enough cores in this machine. You know, there's eight cores built into the M1 chip and the graphics core also has eight chip cores as well. So there's definitely enough power. So there is a new hope. And the good news is if Parallels are updating their software to work with this. It does mean most likely that VMware will copy and VirtualBox will also copy and other virtual machine clients out there will also copy the same idea. So there is hope. Just right now though, at the end of November 2020, it is not available. However though guys, when it does come available, you bet ya, or when I get that private beta, or if I get that technical beta there and I get signed up for it, when I get that, I will be making a video right away for you guys to show you Windows 10 running on an M1 MacBook. And if you want to check that out, and if you want to check out my other videos, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. Well guys, it is time to wrap up this video. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please, as I do say, like the video and also at the same time as well as I just said, please do hit that subscription button and that bell to hear the latest on gaming news, tech news, reviews and comparisons. Until next time guys, I'll see you soon. Bye.